Yeah, I guess we can go ahead and start. All right. Well, this was your idea. This was my idea. Well, welcome to our podcast. Hello, one and all. It's this. This is. Let me stutter one more time. This is the good cringe. What an appropriate intro. I'm your host, <laughs> Tyler Perkins. This is Andy Call. <laughs> uh, today we are going to talk about some music. Tyler and I will. Surprised we haven't talked about this topic like sooner obviously i thought this would have been like the first one we did but we we narrowed it down it's not just music it's our top 10 favorite albums now this is not a top 10 all-time definitive i was gonna say that same word dude chill out (laughs) (laughs) i did it's our favorites oh tyler do you got anything to preface before we begin yeah um before we started recording, Dylan kind of hit the nail on the head on my picks. Uh, is more niche kind of stuff that I'm into. Um, just stuff I kind of grew up with. Yes, that's and what a couple of mine are. Very yeah, nostalgic real nostalgic, albums. exactly. Yes, um, I do have one that is an original soundtrack from a game that I hold really near and dear to my heart. But we'll get into that. We'll get into it. I we'll figured we can it. start at ten and work our way up. That's a I'm going to be honest, this isn't in any particular order. Okay, well, then you can just pick one. I do have mine in order. Okay, gotcha. Because once again, Tyler, I'm more prepared. <laughs> I, would, I don't know about that. That's probably not true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so I guess we'll just hop right in. Yeah. Uh, number 10 for me yeah. is one of the nostalgic ones. I'll preface uh, this pick by saying... This was the first album I ever bought with my own money. The first album that I listened to cover to cover, like, nonstop. And also, this came out the year I got my license. So it was very, like, oh, all summer I'm driving all, like, all over for no reason listening to this uh, album. And it was Lace Up, MGK's, Machine Gun Kelly's first album. Okay. It was the deluxe album. Uh, I really liked it. Um, hey, have you ever listened to it? Uh, you're more of a you're a bigger MGK. I'm a fan, huge MGK, uh, obviously. Fan. Yeah. Yes. I do like his older stuff though, as opposed to his newer stuff. See, I'm just a big fan. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, obviously, not every song is great. This was his first studio album, so like a lot of the songs on there are being carried by like Lil John and Black Bear is actually in one of my favorite songs on there, uh, End of the Road. I don't know if you've heard that. But, uh, if I could sing, I would. But I'm not going to record that for y'all. Uh, but yeah, just it's what Wild Boy was on. Mm-hmm. Um, had a couple really weird tracks, like his DMX track was really dark and gross. Mm-hmm. But you know, he had DMX on. <laughs> uh, but my favorite was probably La La La. It's called The Floating Song, in parentheses. It's just about him and his buddies floating around being high in the car driving around Cleveland. And then at the end, it's like them going through a drive through and r- realizing after they ordered like a bunch of food that none of them have any money. <laughs> um, you know, I was watching a little YouTube the other day, and... Um, I saw that I w- it's arguably a podcast, but it's more like an album review, mm-hmm. and it's with the son and a dad. And um, I've seen that with uh, Mac Miller Circles. I didn't wait. I did see that one. That I also a saw the one, one with um, the Strokes' new album, um, the new Abnormal. I haven't heard it. Really good stuff. I might have to. That's one of those albums. I wish it was on this um, list. I have a not few everything can mentions. be on here. Yeah, that's, so. I had to cross out a few. Just because that's an honorable mention for me, though. Yeah. Well, I guess we could throw we'll throw the honorable mentions in right before number one. Yeah, that'd be real watch mojo of you. Thank you. <laughs> you got to get them to watch the whole video. It's better for ad revenue. There you go. <laughs> uh, so, what's your number ten, or just one you would like to throw out first? Um, if I had to pick my number ten, you know what? Not in particular order. Uh, the first thing I wrote down when I thought of my favorite album. Uh, pornography by extreme Ooh, that's uh do you know that one it's got more than words okay yeah i didn't yeah. know it off the bat but when you said that song I um my first introduction 
to this album. My dad actually showed me one of the lesser known songs. That's, and that's... he's kind of the reason um, half of these songs are on here, for sure. Um, he introduced me to He-Man Woman Hater. And it has this... Shout out Little Rascals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, the beginning is this just driving... A really distorted guitar, ver- like hair metal version of like this flight of the bumblebees piece. Oh, yes. but it's so just electric and it's just amazing. And I fell in love with that song, and that kind of made me um, introduce me to like what I can do with an instrument, like a guitar, because I'm a musician. Um, I went to school for it and all that. Um, and it's just one of my big idols. It was like an introduction to him, thanks to my dad. Um, I never know how to pronounce his name. He did that Game of Thrones cover that you oh, like no, with no. all those guitarists. Oh, the and Fender then, uh, signature cover that yeah. they all did. Um, he was in it. Yeah, he was in it. Which one? His name was. Uh, I don't want to butcher his name. Let me see it. Let me see it. Uh, Nuno Betancourt. I don't know him off the top, but it, I'll look through it next time I watch that video yeah. because I. I had to, to write down well. his name in my phone because, like, I because he's one of my idols. And um, sometimes I just kind of for, I forget his name. What's his name? That's what's his name. That's all. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, see, you funny you say that about your dad being heavily influenced by that uh, for that selection. My number nine is heavily influenced by my my father. It's um, '80s rock. He uh, um, he loves Guns and Roses. Loves L- Leonard Skinner and. Zeppelin stuff mm-hmm. like that, but uh, this is Appetite for Destruction. Ooh, classic! Yeah, so good. Um, we used to listen to actually the Greatest Hits album, mm-hmm. like the one with the two guns. Pointing. And it's like a gray metallic. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I have the, I have the uh, exact same one. Yeah. My dad had a CD for it, and we left it in my grandpa's truck because we used my grandpa's truck for a hunting truck. Mm-hmm. So every time we would get up at five in the morning, be fucking miserably cold, oh, gosh. shivering, drinking my hot cocoa, mm-hmm. driving forty minutes or whatever, trying to warm up. Before we got back out into the cold, we listened to the greatest hits of Guns N' Roses. <laughs> and then some of my favorites were uh, on there. Oh, yeah. Uh, on, actually, the Appetite for Destruction album. So I went, uh, like, as I got older and searched the al- album out. But obviously, like, Welcome to the Jungle, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Sweet Child of Mine, and uh, I got it right here. Actually, ooh, Mr. Brownstone is somebody something that nobody really talks about. I was about to say I'm not familiar with. It's that uh, one. about heroin. Okay. It's a. Uh, it's a phenomenal song. It's. I'm trying to think, you know that country song seven to three, three to mm-hmm. eleven. Yeah. It's like that, but about heroin. <laughs> <laughs> very funny, but um, it's a very heavy song. Uh, and Paradise City as well is another one Classic. of my favorites. But yeah, yeah, me and my brother grew up listening to basically that because my dad was like, this is a phenomenal song. You should listen to this. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Are there any albums on this list that are a best of? Like a, a best greatest of? hits? And no. W- and would you consider them to be like an album? Yes, but I wouldn't put it on a greatest of all time. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, it is. it's your greatest hits album. But that, it, even though, like, it might sell better, I don't think it should be, like, well, this is the best collection uh, ever. ever. Yeah. There are some greatest hits that I'm like, where's this song? Where the fuck is this other song at? Yeah, like, yeah. always. But, you know, deep tracks are always niche. Like, everybody has a favorite, like, deep track. Especially, like, my number two pick. My favorite song on that album is... Something nobody really talks about, but we'll get to that when we get to that. <laughs> uh, I think my fit, I don't think it's on Appetite for Destruction. I think it's Illustrate, um, the one with November Rain on it. Yes, November Rain is probably one of my favorite Guns N' Roses songs. Yeah, again, my dad introduced Isn't me. that a cover as well? It is a Bob, I don't, isn't it a Bob Dylan a Bob song? Dylan cover, yeah. yeah. Um, because it came on, and I was like, did Bob Dylan cover this song? And our boss at the coffee shop, <laughs> love you, Sarah, about slap me. <laughs> Sounds like something she would Yeah, do. she's like, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> uh, good pick, good pick. Good, thank I, you. I dig it. I definitely dig it. What about you, buddy? What's your next one? Um, I'm a huge Queen of the Stone Age um, <laughs> fanboy. You know, I didn't put Queen on my top ten. Queen? 
I I was this close to that close. Led Zeppelin kind of swooped in for the kill on that spot. But um, if I had to put it in a spot on this list, that Led Zeppelin album that I'm going to talk about, I would put it at like six. I was so what? Oh, I guess we'll get to it. Yeah, we'll get but, to it. Uh, so what is your next one? So the next one is like Clockwork. I'm not familiar. Um, Tell me about it. It's arguably one of their best albums because I've never... That was the first time I sat through an album, like front to back, and I was like, that was consistently good. Mm -hmm. Like, there wasn't one song I would even consider my least favorite. Um, I think it also helped that... It got me through, like, my first breakup. Like, you know, like that very first one. Oh, yeah. Where, like, I didn't want to eat. Oh, fuck. Like, I was just a miserable fuck. So you're saying you'd listen to this album and make you hungry. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> Stop joking me. <laughs> um, but it's one of those, um, again, something I share with my dad. Because mm-hmm. I showed him this album. I was like, I can't get enough of it. Like, it's just so good. It's so raw, so crunchy. Um, <laughs> like, the guitar tones are so it's, crunchy, dude. It sounded like you're describing sushi. Sushi? So raw, You've so You've been crunchy. eating a lot of sushi, my man. I've had it three times in the last month. I wouldn't say that's a lot, but it's more no, I mean, than I've like, had it I remember that time. one. T- <laughs> I was over at his house the other day, and you were like, man, I've been on a sushi kick. I have been. Up and until that- this week, we've been doing it every Sunday. <laughs> but we stopped but we stopped I bet that got expensive it did I realized I could have bought so much more food at a grocery store yeah that's the big thing I'm but it's so eating. good short and simple just I love this album because it never missed it didn't miss once what was, it was Queen of the Stone Age Queens of the Stone Age like clockwork like clockwork okay yes. I'm gonna actually write that down very uh aesthetically it's very good like the album cover to like the major tones of each song like what they're about like yeah, control the major tone <laughs> um if i had a tale great story great story great message um smooth sailing well yeah somewhere for you classic <laughs> catchy guitar riff on smooth sailing one of my favorite songs I'm just going to wait for him to write that down. Like clockwork, you say? Like clockwork. I can't believe I remembered that. But, uh, yeah, so that was, that was a nice pick, actually. So, 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 you, I, so I was on the money uh, with, because yeah. I'm not really Told familiar you. with your last two picks, but I think mine are kind of like, I feel like a basic white boy. <laughs> because every time I hop on somebody, like this girl I worked with would have her Spotify up at the front desk at the dispensary and when I'd cover her for a break or something I'd get up there look through her Spotify a little bit I'd be like I don't know any of these songs <laughs> at all maybe they're amazing and I'm just I have terrible taste in music so I, I'm always a little uh, I feel basic because mine are always like super plain mm-hmm. uh, speaking of you said that you had a like soundtracks and stuff like that mm-hmm. this is one I almost changed my number 8 pick because it's technically a mixtape Mm-hmm. Not an album. Now, I have a question for you as a music academic. <laughs> Hit me. What's the difference in a mixtape versus an album? A mixtape. EP versus, a, like, what is the difference in those? So, an EP is something shorter. Okay. It's like max, like, four songs. It's like under, I want to say, like, 20 minutes. Okay. An LP is like a long play. That's a full length 10, 12 song album. Okay. Um, what you're talking about, like a mixtape, technically that's like self publish. <laughs> you know? Okay. Like, um, or it's like the same argument if, if it were like a original soundtrack, like a score, and like a licensed like collection of songs for a movie. Like it would have Welcome to the Jungle on it, and like a bunch of like songs you would know. Sweet. Huh. Does that answer your question? Yeah, kind of. Um, I was reading this off before I came here to Justice. Shout out Justice. <laughs> um, and she was like, oh, I really like that. But that's a mixtape, not an album. And I was like, motherfucker, dude. <laughs> uh, but this is, if you're reading this, it's too late by Drake. 
Okay. One of my favorites. It's actually one of the few albums that I bought a physical copy of that wasn't vinyl because I wasn't into vinyl yet when I bought it. Uh, but some like it's one of those that I can just put on, listen to the whole thing without a skip. Mm-hmm. And I probably at one point knew a good 90% of the words to it because I just that's all I listened to. Uh, but some of my favorites on that was going to be probably... Oh, Six Man was absolutely my favorite. It's just a, a very odd beat to it that you wouldn't expect out of like a mainstream hip-hop. I, I love the weird stuff, man. Like uh, odd time signatures and absolutely, stuff. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, and he changes flow a lot in that one. And then there's Legend, which is... Everybody knows Legend. Mm. Oh. Another burp cast for I've you. I've been trying to like <laughs> hold in this burp the entire time. Let it out, bud. <laughs> Let it out, bud. Uh, shit, baby. Uh, but No Telling and Legend were another couple that I really liked. Um, but yeah, just front to back, I loved it. Had it in my car, my old Saturn, all the time. I had like three al- uh, albums that I owned a physical copy of. But nice. That was one of my favorites for sure. Very nice. Um, I guess my next album, it's something, you ever heard of the Flaming Lips? No. I know you ever one. heard, <laughs> um, our buddy, our, ugh, you ever heard Brayden talk about it? Our buddy Brayden? Probably. Um, he didn't introduce me to it. Um, <laughs> shout to out him? Terry, my dad. <laughs> Let's go again. <laughs> Love that guy. We went to a music festival, um, like two years ago in September and um, they were there. They were part of the lineup. And they were the best. Like, the set pieces on stage were so wild and I weird. Love a good show. Good presentation. Uh, absolutely. They had, like, this inflatable balloon sign that says, Fuck yeah, Louisville. <laughs> and they, like, threw it into the crowd. It was it was something else, man. Um, but the reason I put... A lot put, of things of something. That was something else. <laughs> um, I don't know. It just felt like divine intervention like i was like meant to be there at that concert That's awesome. um because my grandma passed away while we were there and um that music kind of helped me through that week a little bit because that was like really rough week for me because i was sick during that festival too so i was dealing with that and my grandma was gone and um <laughs> when we got back from that festival i was going to go to this other concert with a buddy of mine, I got kicked out of that concert. I so it was just a, just a tsunami of just bullshit and bad news. And that music really uh, helped me through, like a little dark patch that I was going through, um, for sure. I'm trying to think. When I was at that concert, um, <laughs> I love this album, but like I, I'm not like a diehard fan of the band. So when I don't know someone's name, I feel like a fake fan or like I don't know what I'm talking about or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of just rambling at this point. But when I was at that concert, he was talking about, um, man, it's been so long since I've been there. He was talking about losing loved ones and keeping that love really close to your heart. And um, if there's something that you were wanting to say to them, if the roles were reversed, um, they would think the same thing. You know, there was so much I wanted to tell them. There's so much I wanted to say to them. I never got to tell them how much I loved them. Um, it was basically just, just know they think the same thing. That's awesome. Yeah. And I was like, that was something I really needed to hear. Like, um, yeah. Thinking about that, like right now makes me happy. Like it makes That's me warm and fuzzy. Like, Warm and fuzzy. Warm and fuzzy. Like I had some. Um, and the album I'm talking about is, um, <laughs> they're a really weird band too. Come up with really wacky fucking songs. Yoshime battles the pink robots, and it's about this Japanese girl fighting big pink robots. Hell yeah! And yeah, that's great. Uh, again with the niche. I wish, I, yeah, <laughs> I wish I could tell you what that album's about, but I just like Who's to say? getting high and putting that album on. And just looking at YouTube videos and shit in my free time. Yeah. And just chilling. Yeah. It's a good time. 
That's great. I'm really glad I wrote that down because I would have not have been able to improv <laughs> and think of all that on the spot. That's great, man. Yeah. yeah. Look at you taking notes. Yeah. Oh, I'm proud of you. I sound more intelligent. Intelligent. <laughs> you do it. You do it. Um, You're up, buddy. But another one uh, on my that I think like a lot of people would have on it <laughs> mm-hmm. for my number seven. It's uh, Abbey Road by the Beatles. Classic. I mean, it's the fucking it's the You're best of the Beatles. The classics, it's the man. best of the Beatles. I oh mean, yeah, man. Oh man. I have it right behind you on vinyl. Um, actually, a little funny story about the Beatles. It's actually not about the Beatles, but it's about my friend making fun of me for defending the Beatles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so my buddy Tristan always talks shit on whatever music I like. He's like, "It's fucking terrible, man." But like. I'm not going to talk shit on his music taste, so let's just say that. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, he'll, like, purposely say, oh, like, let's say the Beatles are on. He'll be like, I fucking love the Ramones. <laughs> I, yeah, I got you. That kind of joke. And he'll be like, you know who absolutely sucks ass? John Lennon. <laughs> just And I'll, like, fucking get so pissed. And mm-hmm. he'll laugh. And my brother will laugh. Yeah. And that's how I know it's a good joke. Because it pisses me off. <laughs> but other people think it's funny. And, like, I said that to him one time. Said something about, like, if the Beatles never existed, nothing would change in music history. Mm. Just to piss me off. Right. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> Do not say anything else. I'm going to let that one slide. Don't say another goddamn thing disrespecting the Beatles. And he was like, they fucking suck. And I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> and he starts cracking <laughs> up. Like, it's the funniest fucking thing. Oh, my God. And then I told him how I knew it was a funny joke because mm-hmm. everyone else in the room was cracking up, but I was pissed off. And if it, he was doing this to Dalton, I my think brother, about it, yeah. I would be cracking up. I think it's the most mature thing I've ever heard. I was, when you know a joke's funny when you're the one that's pissed off and everyone's laughing. Yeah, I was so fucking pissed. <laughs> oh, my God. It reminds me of my history teacher. Like, Come Together was playing, like, during, like, towards the end of the period. And uh, a few of my other, like, me and a few other of my classmates, we were singing, like, along with it, you know? A classic song. And um, he walks back into the room. Uh, he came back from something, and... He was like, oh, you guys like the Beatles? Yeah, yeah. They suck. <laughs> this is, uh, like, every, the but he gave us time to like react to it. I was like, oh, yeah, we love this song. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, they fucking suck. <laughs> Does he really not? No, he didn't say fucking. Does he really not like the Beatles? Yeah, though? he just, li- not lit. He loathed them. Like, Is this the bald one or the fighter one? The fighter one. No, he's the character. <laughs> he's quite the character. Oh, yeah, other than that one instance, he was an all right guy. It was just a weird interaction. <laughs> my just, opinion. My opinion. Or it uh, wasn't even an opinion. I was just singing a song. And he was like, oh, you like the Beatles? I, yeah, you make me sick. He just walks into your house. Oh, you like food? <laughs> food sucks. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. I hate food. <laughs> what do you do for sustenance? Answer your phone. I did. Be a bad host. It's your house. <laughs> the host of our show? Is it, can there be two hosts? Yeah, there's a host and a co-host. There you go. I'm co-hosting. I'm okay. coasting. I can't be head host. <laughs> head honch host. I can't be honch host. <laughs> uh, what's your next one, buddy? Um, Let's see. I think... The- <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing footsie with a little people. footsie. Um... <laughs> I guess I will make this one. Oh, yeah, this would be number six, wouldn't it? Yes. Well, that was my number seven. That was your, so we're on number six. Yeah. Uh, I'll stick to my guns, or what I said earlier. earlier. I guess my number six pick would be uh, House of the Holy, Led Zeppelin. Hell, yeah. I was and wondering what Zeppelin album it was. That again, One of those albums, like Clockwork, where it's just consistently good, like the front all, to all back, the way through. all the way through. That's my dad's favorite album. Um, it brings me back to when I was younger, just real nostalgia goggles on that one. <laughs> but, uh, the rain song, the ocean day maker, right. Or day dire maker or which, I think which it's dire. dire maker. It might not be dire. Right? I'm a bad fan. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a huge fan either, but I do. I do like that one. I gotcha. I gotcha. Oh man. 
Good stuff. Uh, yeah. I love, was it Black Dog? I think that's one of my favorites. Uh, is though. Black Dog on there? No, it's not on that album. That's just one of my favorite Zeppelin songs. Oh, hell yeah. I think the Rain song is definitely my favorite. Hell yeah. Brother. Uh, you, you're up, bud. I'm up now. Yeah. Um, another, well, I wouldn't say this would be on everybody's top 10, but it's definitely on my top 10. I actually double up a few times on my top 10. So, like, I have multiples. Uh, this is one of my multiples. Uh, this is going to be Animals by Pink Floyd. Okay. Love it. It's only five songs, but it's like a 45, 50 minute album. Like it's oh, very, shit. Very long songs. Like my favorite one on there is called Dogs. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think it's like 17 minutes, 16 minute run time. Gotcha. Uh, then there's two songs called Pigs, but my the one I prefer is called um, Pigs and then parentheses it says three different ones. Mm-hmm. And then Sheep. Sheep's really good, too. But it's definitely... <laughs> Dogs is my absolute favorite on the album. Uh, it's one of those that I can just lose myself in on a road trip. It, like, especially if there's not a lot going on in the car. If you're by yourself or if you're uh, with somebody that you can sit in comfortable silence with. Mm-hmm. That's a good song to get lost in. Oh, or, I bet. Oh, dude, it's so good. Um, but yeah, Animals... It, it was tough ranking from here up for me. It oh, was really? really tough getting in It's between. like making your favorite kid. Like, Oh, man, that's tough. Yeah. It is pretty tough. That's tough. The rest of the songs on here are just simply, I just like the songs. Or I like the album. Because mm-hmm. um, really albums for me. And um, I was listening to an interview with Jack White. They're not the same. With like... Um, I think he was talking to like Conan, I think, and or he's talking to Jimmy Fallon, I think, and um, he asked the question if um, a certain piece he wrote like brings him back to a time where he's like, oh, I remember I did this, mm-hmm. I remember what I was feeling when I wrote this. Um, I feel like this next album kind of does that for me a little bit too. Like it immediately, whenever I hear a song from this album, I go to that point in my point in my time. Uh, time of time period point. that point in my life um it's you're gonna miss it all modern baseball oh you are a big modern baseball fan yes i am That's yes true. i am r.i.p there <laughs> quote unquote on break indefinitely or a hiatus that indefinite. happened to me with the one direction buddy i know how you feel <laughs> <laughs> definite hiatus uh they're uh, coming back <laughs> i know they're coming back they told me <laughs> they have a really seven good, years ago now they have a really good documentary um i guess as the documentary is about like why they're on break because like the lead singer has um, depressive episodes oh, and no. um, anxiety. Yeah, oh, so man. that's rough. It's um, it's a really good documentary. Yeah, I would go check I it out. It's on YouTube. Music documentary, like the Coldplay documentary, is absolutely. F- I would recommend it to anybody that even remotely likes Coldplay to watch it. I won't spoil your list. I was gonna ask if there was a Coldplay. There list. isn't a Coldplay okay. because I. It's one of those things like like Mac Miller is also not on here. Because I like a lot yeah. of his songs. I not Circles and Swimming are really good albums, but mm-hmm. I don't love every single track on it. Right. Yeah. So I didn't want to put it in a top ten albums when we could come back in and do it mm-hmm. like a top ten. Because there are some songs I absolutely love, but the album is just fucking atrocious. Yep. I don't know. I like. There's a couple songs. Floor Thirteen by MGK is one of my favorites. MGK songs, but the there's, I'd say half of Hotel Diablo is not great, mm. so I didn't, I didn't put Hotel Diablo on here. But uh, yeah, I had a, a lot of stuff on here that like, I'm surprised that mm. this artist didn't make the list. In even though I doubled up on some artists, you know, you saying Mac Miller isn't on there uh, is very surprising to me. I figured there'd be at least like I, Best I, Day Ever on there or something. I really like um, Best Day Ever. But mm-hmm. I don't like every single song. Then that's fair. Same with Blue Slide Park. Yeah. Love Blue Slide Park. Love Frick Park Market Party on Fifth Ave. Love. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Smile back. That's the next one I was thinking of. But they're all phenomenal songs. But you know, there's another three quarters of the album there mm-hmm. that I'm not taking into account, and I don't want to take out albums that I like as a whole better for this list in particular. Um. We got on a little tangent. A little tangent. A little um, foreshadowing for a future episode. Let us know down in the comments. <laughs> comments below. <laughs> All 
Um, but it's kind of a funny kind of period of my life because um, it reminds me. This album reminds me of when um, I went on vacation down in Texas to visit my grandparents. White people, am I right? And um, <laughs> uh, you're making me lose my train of thought over here. You're in Texas I'll, on vacation. I'll kill you. Don't you ever interrupt me again. At least pause the podcast first so you don't get in trouble. Please. Makes it more interesting. This is now a murder mystery podcast. There's only three <laughs> exits. <laughs> Who killed Dylan? <laughs> yeah. It was me. Keep listening. Um, but uh, one of my close friends um, introduced me to modern baseball. Oh, they always talk about it. And I was like, I never really gave him a chance. And I listened to Apartment off that album. And I immediately fell in love. Like... It was very genuine. Remind me a lot of the front bottoms in the in terms of lyricism, like just very. It wasn't like a rhyming scheme. It was more like broke down frames in my friends' bodies, like just very yeah. literal lyrics. And um, I like how chunky that was. That that's how the song goes. Um, that's uh, Twin that's, Sides. That's very choppy, like mm, that's what I'm saying. It's like very the, the rhythm li- bounced yes, very well. Yeah, the cadences on. Some songs like that are yeah. uh, a little odd. Um, but every time I think of this album, I think of this Tinder date I went on. Um, I was on vacation with my family in Texas, and I matched with someone. And uh, this is towards the end of the trip, mind you. And um, <laughs> we met up at a theater, and we watched Cars 3. And it was just chi- it was a chill time. <laughs> It was the only thing in the theater. <laughs> oh, of all... Th- I was of not expecting things. you to say of Cars all th- 3. Oh, the story gets worse. Oh, man. That's almost as bad as making out during that... What's that fucking movie? Oh, God. I just ruined my own reference. <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. All right. I'll Never save much. it. I'll save it. Um, yeah, it was just a chill <laughs> time. Towards the end, we made out during Cars 3. Because... Schindler's God, List. That's what it is. Because <laughs> that was it. So, <laughs> you made out during Schindler's List? Jerry, because um, <laughs> goddamn Cars Three is not a good movie. It's kind of um, boring. Um, I'll tell you something later. Off yeah. podcast about movie theaters. Oh, spicy. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, yeah, we had a good time. Um, first date, mind you. Um, and uh, I don't live in that state. And she kind of fell super hard for me on that first date. Apparently. Oh no. So did you do it before you left? Oh, yeah. Okay. I didn't know if you're like back here home and <laughs> she's still like, I <laughs> Where love are you. you? <laughs> it says you're like 1,200 miles away now. But uh, <laughs> no, she did not take it well. And, did you uh, do it in person? No. Good. <laughs> she didn't I, deserve you, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I've almost said her name. Uh, I'll t- I'll say- <laughs> she had a really unique name. Uh, I'll say that. <laughs> What's her name? Unique. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Uh, great kisser. Um, Terrible I will, person. I will never, I won't say that. I will never see her again. Woo! Woo! That's a good time. What part of Texas were you in? You know, it's been so long, I can't even remember. <laughs> that's how much I give a shit. All right. Great story. No, that's funny, though. Take I can't care. believe you. <laughs> I couldn't believe it she either. She fell so hard. So, my next one yeah. is one that I thought we might have on both of our lists. Let me... You wanna you wanna guess? Oh, I can guess. Yeah. <laughs> Weezer Teal album. No, that's a good <laughs> one. Oh fuck, that's a good one. Shit. Yeah, you, I didn't even put yeah, you oh, retcon like... your own list. <laughs> no, it's a uh, fine line. <sighs> that was yeah. I should have guessed that. That's a good one. I'm guessing you don't have it. I don't. Okay. But that. Again, that's one of those albums where it's just consistently good. Mm-hmm. Very good. Uh, you can tell that a lot of his music takes inspiration from old, like British rock. Oh, for Especially, sure. Especially like on on the track "She," mm-hmm. that is very Pink Floyd, very Pink Floyd. And I thought that as well with um, his debut album. Mm-hmm. It was very. Uh, I wouldn't say exactly British rock, but more like. John Lennon on that first album, but I'll get more into that later. Um, but yeah, fine line because falling is one of the most beautiful piano ballads 
Oh man, and then it's so phenomenal. There's actually a story. Leads you speechless. Yes, absolutely. And the way it was written. Are you familiar? Have you ever yeah, read, like how it. how it was written? No, I wasn't. Familiar so with how it was written. when he made both of his albums, he like took a group of people to a tropical place, and like they just stayed in a house and like just made music. That's all they did mm-hmm. for like a month, and they made both albums. So on this one, it was just him. A guitar tech and then uh, his producer and the producer was playing piano and they were just kind of like at a blocking point like there was nothing going on like they couldn't think anything new they were like about to give up for the day mm-hmm. Harry goes and takes a piss and when he comes back his uh, music producer is playing that <laughs> and then after he heard that they wrote the song in 20 minutes like the, all the entire lyrics and everything. I remember you told me that story. It, it's just a, like a crazy like, the fact that they're about to give up for the day. If they would have gave up five minutes sooner, yeah. that that song might not exist. If, like, they weren't working together that time, like maybe one of them had something going on, they couldn't have made it. It's just like a everything had to be in that exact same mm-hmm. spot to make that song. But you can say that about a lot of songs too but i just it just really hit me with falling hell yeah but uh she is another one of my favorites on there great song and another one that we both love i'm sure you know what i'm about to say cherry i love love cherry cherry. cherry's so good so good don't you call him baby (laughs) (laughs) don't you call him what you used to call me absolutely but another one i like really just more for the message uh, on this (laughs) album is treat people with kindness it's just Mm. a it actually won VMA for the best choreographed music video this year. Mm-hmm. And great music video, but it's just like a nice message to get across. It's oh, yeah. Maybe we can find a way that everyone can be happy and everyone can treat people with kindness. Absolutely. It was just a nice little thing. He's, he's a very wholesome guy. He is a very wholesome man, I will admit. I'm handsome I met too. Him. Yeah, I I saw him. Um, Yo, you a- oh you actually did. Yeah, yeah you saw him in, in September. Yeah. yeah, it was phenomenal. Yeah, um, I'm very susceptible to being like emotionally influenced by media or mm-hmm. like something. Like if if a movie is trying to get you to feel a certain way and it's done well, I do that every single time. Mm-hmm. This, like. When he's saying cherry and when he's saying uh, lights up, Mm -hmm. dude, I was like, it's not that I was sad and like sobbing, but I was welling up, like just like, yeah, glassy eyes. Experiencing one of the greatest musical people that are alive right now. And arguably one of the best there's been as far as like success goes. So uh, it was just really. (laughs) hit me all at once with that not bad yeah. man man oh man oh man yeah it was really good phenomenal show <laughs> it they put like this filter over the screen mm-hmm. that they you know they, am i bleeding yeah your face is bleeding. my face is bleeding uh, I take this cap. hang on i got some oh god we'll be right back <laughs> <laughs> he's bleeding oh god I'm passing out. He's convulsing. Yeah. He's cussing. <laughs> He's cussing. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No problem. Uh, but yeah, they had this like filter on. And the, we're back. The video, mm-hmm. back, on top of the big screen, and it, like with their outfits, and they're all playing like big Les Pauls, and yeah, uh, it looks very like '70s aesthetically. Yeah. And I, that was a nice touch he did on that. It was it really set the vibe for everything. I really like these mainstream artists trying to bring back this soul 70s kind of aesthetic. Yes, yes, uh Silk Sonic made my honorable mentions. I didn't even think to put them in the honorable mentions. That's fine. Cuz it really blew me away. Yes, that that whole album's great. Yes. Absolutely. An evening with Silk Sonic. Oh man. Oh, but uh give me give me your next one, bud. You're up. Um, what are we on number five? Uh that was my number five, yes. That was your number five. Um Scumfuck Flower Boy. You've showed me this guy. My yes. boy Tyler. The creator. Yes, sir. I I actually I was really big on um I think it was golf. 
mm-hmm. that album. I was huge on that. Uh, but yeah. it's, you told me to listen to that, and it was a really good album. It is a great uh, fucking album. Um, me and my uh, friend, I guess I won't say his name, the Big Hair Boy. Big Hair Boy. Big Hair. Um, we're both Tyler fans, um, but he doesn't really like um, the goblin era kind of stuff where he's mm-hmm. kind of like homophobic and trying to be really edgy with yeah. everything. Um, but yeah, this is like modern baseball. Um, it brings me back to when um, I went on vacation in Florida with like some of my closest friends and uh, that album just dropped like the second night we were there or something. And we were just playing that on repeat like wow. the entire time we were there. Like whatever we were doing, like we were like, Oh fucking um what's that one with little Wayne on it? I forgot the name of it, but um we were always playing that one. And uh See You Again. Love that song. Um Who That Boy. Who that boy. Who, who that is <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's um yeah, definitely up there for me. Making a note, sorry. No, you're good. Um I'm surprised I don't have any childish Gambino on here either. I don't either, but that's again one of the things I I never really got taken back of a whole album of his, yeah. But every album he's put out, I've liked. Mm-hmm. I like, I just wasn't huge into the entire album. So I, gotcha. I didn't want to put it on this. I liked Camp. That's Camp it. was good. That's really Bonfire good. Bonfire is one of my favorite songs of Gambino. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's really, mine. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Hell yeah, man. Uh, so I this, changed that at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, next one of mine is near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Because I have a couple cool stories about it. Um, number one. Oh, well, I guess I'll just say what it is. It's 2014 Forest Hills Drive by J. Cole. Okay. Phenomenal album. So my buddy Doug, he got me a birthday present one year. Mm-hmm. And it was to go see J. Cole. When he was touring this album. That's awesome. First rap concert I ever went to. First time I ever smoked weed in public. First time. <laughs> like, it was just crazy. I was like, you know, 18, going to this concert. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I wasn't even a big J. Cole fan at that point. But I loved the concert. I was going more because Big Sean was opening for him. Mm-hmm. Which, Big Sean was great. But yeah. J. Cole blew me away. He did the album front to back. And mm. then did his hits. Man. Yeah. It was phenomenal. <laughs> uh, so fast forward like a year and a half. I'm in North Carolina. Li- like that's where I live at this point. At the local YMCA in Cary, North Carolina. Walk in and there's a sign on the door with somebody standing at the door. And says, please leave all cell phones in the locker room. I'm like, that's fucking weird because, like, people make videos at this YMCA. Like, that's where people go and make, like, their workout tapes and stuff, locally, at least at the time. So I'm like, that's odd. I walk in after I went and put my phone up, and this place is always packed, but this, like, it was elbow to asshole this day. (laughs) Like, it was to the brim full. Uh, And there was, like, four games, full court, basketball court games going on. And I get to looking. Jermaine Cole is playing on one of these fucking courts, and I got to play against him. I went, I didn't That's guard cool him or anything, fun. but like it was my picked up team versus the team he he was like running the court. His team was, and we mm-hmm. got to we had next, so we hopped on. Fucking nuts! And then nobody <laughs> believed me because they were like, "No phones." Uh, oh my! God. I called like all my friends. I'm like, guys, I fucking met J Cole, and they're like, "No, you didn't." You. What? I'm like, I saw J. Cole dunk a basketball. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's like, awesome. I'm like freaking out. Like, <laughs> nobody believes me. But uh, yeah, as I'm living there, um, that happens. So naturally, I start listening to J. Cole more. <laughs> so I'm like, yes. Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> um, and at the time, I was working at a sports place. But on the side, I was mowing like the neighborhood I lived in. Mm-hmm. And... I would listen to the 2014 Forest Hills Drive, and I was, like, at a point to where I didn't want to come back home, but I didn't want to live there anymore. Mm -hmm. And I felt 
very limited and a lot of options and very out of control. And he's got a song called Love Yours. And he's like, a, there's always going to be a house that's bigger than the one you got. Always going to be shoes fresher than the ones you got. Like, um, always going to be a better bitch out there on the tour. But you're never going to be thankful until you love yours. And I actually have a tattoo to my arm. Like, it's <laughs> phenomenal. Like, it Hell just yeah. really hit me while I was... It just sh- changed my perspective while I was living out there and just helped me, like, figure out what I wanted to do. That's beautiful, man. Thanks. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Anything? Anything uh, else? Yeah, Wet Dreams is a fucking classic. <laughs> 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 Talking about fucking this bitch. <laughs> Love it. Oh, phenomenal. And O3 Adolescence is great, too. It's very good to hear somebody that almost didn't make it talk about almost not making it about how when he was 16 he saw his 19 year old cousin making 200 dollars a week selling weed and a little bit of something else on the side Mm -hmm. so he was trying to get into that life because he was 16 his mom was struggling with rent didn't have food all the time Mm -hmm. he's like 200 dollars a week that's a lot of money and then his cousin was talking about like hey man how are you looking up to me when i look up to you like you're the smart dude you're the one going to college like all this shit it's another beautiful story another beautiful story awesome this episode's going really well i feel like i think it's your fault it's all my fault i'm so you sorry bastard. i should leave <laughs> <laughs> um, let me choke on my spit <laughs> <laughs> um so my we're nearing towards the end of this list. Yeah, yeah. That um, was my number four. Absolutely. Um, number four for me, I feel like, would have to be Plastic Beach, Gorillas. Oh, I love Gorillas so much. Love me some Gorillas. You either love them or you hate them. I, I hated them at first. Really? I hated them purely based on their animated music videos as a Re- child. I mean, that I was the only thing that kind of kept I didn't me going. Like them. I didn't like the way it looked. I thought it was ugly. I love weird aesthetics, man. But... um it wasn't until I was older and my buddy Kyle, mm-hmm. shout out Kyle, we need to get him in here. Oh, that would be fun. That would be fun. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, that would, uh, He he's the one that was, he, we'd always play a game called You Groove, You Lose, and we'd bring a song every time we'd hang out. Mm-hmm. And if the other person grooves to it, that means you won the game. Because <laughs> if you groove, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, love the gorillas. Hell yeah. Um, I think... Um, my first introduction to it, I think a lot of people's introduction to the gorillas was uh, Clint Eastwood. Yep. 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 Uh, I mean, when I was younger, obviously, I saw some on like VH1, but I never really listened to any of it. Yeah. But yeah, Clint Eastwood was actually on the 2K14 soundtrack. Oh, really? No. Uh, the NBA 2K14 soundtrack. And that's Great what really song. got me into it yeah. after Kyle was giving me a little nudge. <laughs> Great song. Um, me and him, actually, we kind of bonded over. Um, they do a series called Song Machine. They do, they collabed with um, Elton John. Um, I'm trying to think. But uh, I chose Plastic Beach because that was kind of like my gateway to Gorillaz. Okay. I loved the album cover. Rhinestone Eyes is like one of those niche songs that I always forget about. But when I come back to it, I'm like, fuck, I love this song mm-hmm. so much, dude. And the, um, they do, like Dylan said... They do like animation oriented music videos, or that's kind of their gimmick, if you will. Yeah. And um, and as a child, I didn't get it. I was, yeah, yeah. I'm like, so what do they look like? Just totally over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when they do live shows, they do like pretty decent. Like, um, I saw one concert. They performed "Kids with Guns" live, and that was really good. Um, <laughs> the song's kind of self explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, Gorillaz is one of those bands where they're just, like, wonderfully weird, and they can just make art out of anything, I feel like. I gotcha. Yeah. Um, they got Snoop Dogg on here for the intro, Welcome to the World, The Plastic Beach. Um, just, man, just some great songs on here. Absolutely. Like, just, just, just bottom line. Absolute bangers. Absolute bangers. You know, actually, what's a really good album, yeah. uh, Montero. By Lil Nas X. Okay. It's a really good, it's like almost a guilty pleasure song. Like, I know it's not a phenomenal, like, work of art that's one of the 
greats of all time. But right. I, it's fun. It's yeah. It's really fun. We like fun songs here. I got like one fun album on here. Buy fun. <laughs> I almost put a fun album. Really? On They're really good. I, I bet. Their older stuff's great. So you just said your four? That was my fourth. Yes. Okay, so I want, for our last three, I want you to guess one <coughs> artist that you think I'm going to have. Okay. And I'll guess one for you. Um, I think you have Pup on here. You know me so well. Yeah. I do have Pup on okay, here. Okay, I don't know any of their albums, but I know you're a big Pup fan, so... You wouldn't have another MGK song. I do. Oh, you do? I another do. MGK album? On I, there? Yeah, I doubled up, actually. You doubled up. Actually, <laughs> my last three are all double ups. <laughs> um, of people I've already said. But that that was an easy guess, if you know Dylan at all. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Honestly, they all are. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I said, you nailed the, all right, you cool. nailed the nail on so, the head. For number three, my first double up of the day. It's going to be Harry Styles' debut album, self-titled debut album. It's called Harry Styles, <laughs> after himself, obviously. It's self-titled. Right. On right. His debut. An ST, if you will. <laughs> I just keep saying that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this was um, this came out when I was working for that musician. And when I was working for them, I stopped being... I stopped listening to so much rap. I stopped listening to so much synthetic music. Mm-hmm. I really found an appreciation for live music like musicians and listening to imperfect music yeah and enjoying it and appreciating it for what it is yeah and this came out and it was very i didn't realize it at the time but it was very john lennony very pink floydy as i said earlier but um it it just really struck a chord it was also before i really got into them um because i you know as my dad listened to a bunch of old rock Never got into Pink Floyd. I had never listened to Pink Floyd until I was an adult. And I watched The Wall, like the movie. Man. Um, But this right here, um, I gave the drummer a ride home. Like the van we all rode around and dropped us off like in the middle of our two homes. Mm. And I drove her to hers and then I went home. But I made her listen to most of this album. And she was like, I am so taken aback because all she knew was he was the kid from One Direction, mm-hmm. and she was expecting a, a One Direction album, and he put out a music art piece. Yeah, it's just phenomenal. Two Ghosts is my favorite on the album, absolutely. Uh, two Ghosts, yeah. I mean, it just kind of sounds like Two Lost Souls. Yeah, uh, swimming in a fishbowl, you know. Were Were you a big Zane fan? Uh, Zane fan when he was in the. The band, yes, but I'm not a big fan of his solo stuff. Like, I like Pillow Talk, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. But same with, like, I don't like Liam's stuff. Mm-hmm. I did see Niall yeah. Horan in concert. That was phenomenal. Oh, I bet. So I've seen two guys in One Direction in concert. Uh, separately. <laughs> separately. <laughs> I did see One Direction, but <laughs> separately. Um Oh man, I didn't even think of Flicker. That's a really good album too. That's an honorable. Can I mention. can I just say uh, while we're being recorded, um, when you first told me that you were really into like One Direction and um, High School Musical and the Jonas Brothers, I am, yeah, yeah, J- yeah. JB, yeah. I never judged you, but I was like, I just never heard of like a grown man be like. I'm really into like One Direction and uh, yeah, they're listen. really good. Yeah, they are really good. Obviously, I know they're a boy band, and I know yeah, they're yeah. not an all time. You're not band. stupid. It's like... just one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I really just, like NSYNC. Too. It's very uh, ad- not admirable, uh, very admirable. Oh, but, um, yeah, yeah. I uh, I'm a big One Direction fan. I the same rule applied with the didn't love the entire fucking album, mm-hmm. uh, but I really almost put Made in the AM on here. It's a great album. Uh, no Zane on that album. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he's a quitter. That. What a freaking quitter. But, uh, yeah, Sweet Creature is really great off of uh, Harry Styles' first album. Um, Kiwi is another funky one that makes, like... I love Kiwi. Yeah, it's just so weird. I'm having your baby. baby. It's, uh, and it's so out of place on the album, too. It's You know, I thought that same thing. It's, like, you go from, like, woman to, like, Kiwi... Yeah, and then like uh, meet me in the hallway and at the dining room table, all these slow, like mysterious, yeah, almost like uh, beginning of a ghost story feel type <laughs> vibe. Yeah, I get I get that vibe definitely. And then it's just like 
guitar hard as fuck. Now, baby. Yeah. None of your business, motherfucker. Anyway. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> um, my number three is pop. It's a pop album. I uh, nailed it. It was. <laughs> yeah, you, you really did. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> the last three are all pop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I was torn between the self-titled or um, the dream is over, but I am just a whore for really good catchy guitar riffs and just a good chemistry with like the band. Actually, speaking of chemistry, they're the first song on that album is about how much they fucking hate each other. Oh my god! Because <laughs> they've been on tour. Yeah, for a yeah, long time. tour will fuck. And much they really romanticize up. that idea of like tour seems like this fucking grungy, horrible fucking thing, and you seem tired all the time, but like. They keep doing it though. Mm-hmm. The DVP, um, the the store doesn't kill you. I will familiar patterns, um, just good. I I love punk. Um, last year my Spotify Wrapped. Um, I'm was, a big punk fan too. Yeah, my number one genre was punk, like mm-hmm. that old school kind old, of old like the '80s like, punk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in the '70s, like the Stooges and um, oh, I love the Stooges, yeah. the billiards and um, like Joyce Manor. Um, I'm looking at my record shelf right now, trying to figure it out. The monkeys, um, <laughs> <laughs> the kings, <laughs> the kings, man. The, the, the animals. Um, but yeah, the Stooges, um, the Sonics, just really raw. I just love those raw, crunchy, sex pistols over, um, like cranked up to eleven, blowing out the amp kind of yeah. sound. Um, but with Pup, it sounds more. Refined version of punk. They're from Toronto. More I intentional. Believe. Yeah. Um, it's like they understand like what sounds good. And it also helps that like they have talent behind <laughs> like the guitarist is talented, the bassist. Everyone is it just, helps that they're good. It helps that they're good. It really does. And a lot like modern baseball and um front bottoms lyricism, they have that again, real literal lyrics um like in dvp um the very opening line is like your sister thinks that i'm a freak and it's just like because <laughs> i love angry music i don't know what it is i love like really loud Me too i really music. um actually i've told you this but i'll say it on the podcast um, i was listening to a simple plan song i think it was perfect I love simple plan, yeah. yeah simple plan is great yeah um i was listening to it with my dad on the way to cal or colorado excuse me um for a hunting trip and he looks at me after the line. It says like it's not. It's not your fault. It's not forever. It's okay not to be perfect. Or something <laughs> along those lines. And he looks at me and he's like, "Dylan, are you okay? Like, do we need to talk? Do you, did you play this for a reason?" And I was like, "Dad, <laughs> I just Dad, like, stop. I just keep being cringe. <laughs> That's good cringe. Uh, it was not at the time. <laughs> I was fucking." <laughs> I was cracking up when he told me. Yeah, that, that was just such a. <laughs> he's done it multiple times too, like with yeah. different songs. <laughs> but that one it just really stood out. I love it. It's tickets to my downfall. Yeah. Love that album so much. I listened to it cover to cover the night it dropped. Hell yeah, baby! It was so good. Um, Can't look back is a deep cut of mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is my absolute favorite. It's actually the first song, other than when. Um, other than Smoke on Water that everybody learns on guitar. But that was the first, like, little riff I learned was from Can't Look Back. It's just very... It's a, an angry song. Uh, <laughs> it's... Um, can't Look Back When the Memories Look Like That is the the main chorus. And it's just a very strongly, like, I love you but I hate you mm-hmm. type of song. Yeah. And it it's great. And... It, it's it's played uh, toned down. I think it's in a D flat. Yeah. Um, or is that or a, E flat? A, a, like tuned down half D a step? or something. Oh, drop D tuning. Drop okay. D. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's in. So it's like really deep bass heavy. Yeah. It, it sounds really great. Um, and then Lonely is about um, him losing his dad, mm. uh, who he didn't have a good relationship with. And he was growing up, he was getting this more success, and he's tried redeeming that relationship and mm-hmm. like they finally did and then his dad got cancer man and it was, it's just about like his emotions after losing him and when he was young he lost his aunt his dad's sister mm-hmm. and if, if you know anything about him his mom split when he was like very very young 
uh, another uh, they have re- since rekindled like in the last couple of years too, mm-hmm. thanks to actually his fans from what I've read. Uh, but it's another very heartfelt song, uh, talking about feeling lonely in a room full of people type thing. Gotcha. Uh, and then there's you know fun songs on there like uh, Bloody Valentine and I do like Blood. I don't friend. like his new stuff, but like I do like Bloody Valentine. I hate Ex Best Friend so much. Really? I don't like that. <laughs> That's song. funny because I like that song. Really? Yeah. It's just I think it's an overplayed aspect. I'm not a huge Black Bear fan. Oh, uh, okay. Um, and I'm also one of those. It's his radio song on the album <laughs> type thing. Uh, Concert for Aliens is what the one I think should have been in place. That oh, one would have yeah. been really fun to for everyone to be blasting. Uh, and then there's obviously Drunk Face that everybody knows. Oh yeah. Uh, What's the one with Halsey? Forget me too. That, that one's was great. It. That was it. Um, then he has another song. Uh, it's called Play This When I'm Gone. He wrote to his daughter, mm-hmm. um, and when he wrote it, he was heavily, severely addicted to cocaine, <laughs> like to the point that people were worried about him. Oh, man. And he wrote it knowing that he's not going to be around for his daughter forever. And it was just a message saying that, like, um, you're going to cry and it's going to be okay type of thing. Mm. Uh, It's just another emotionally moving song. Yeah. But, you know, if you don't like MGK, a lot of people shit on this entire album. We (laughs) can't. Well, we could go on and on about MGK. Honestly. Absolutely, I we could, could make a topic. Honestly, absolutely, like a debate. I like, oh, okay, yeah, we can do it. Yeah, yeah, we can go through his albums and yeah, yeah totally. that'd be great. Um, I'd have a great fucking time doing that. <laughs> but this is about our favorite albums, not deconstructing. Yes, man. absolutely. Um, but yeah, what's what's your next one here? So I was kind of like jumbling between the two because one. Arguably, it's not like his best work, but um, I listened to it in a very transitional uh, part of my life. I just got my license, and like you were talking about Those earlier, best, earlier yeah. in the episode, you have that album mm-hmm. that you just kind of leave in the CD tray in your car, and you when, just, when none of the radio stations are coming in, yeah, exactly, yeah, click it on. just click it on and listen to it on repeat. Um, that. Album for me was Jack White's uh, Lazaretto. Really bluesy. Reminds you of like a <laughs> coffee shop rock is a genre I would put that in. And like that. Um, again, it's like not his best work. It's good. It was on the top 200 albums list. Really? Yeah. See, well, I didn't even, I mean, Rolling Jack Stones White put thing. out an article about this in 2020 because I was doing some research to see like what the top grossing albums of all time were, just to see uh-huh. if like I'm missing something <laughs> that I'm like just oblivious <laughs> Am I to. Stupid? Yeah. Like, um, but yeah, that one was actually I remember seeing that. Interesting. Interesting. Everyone, would, I feel like everyone was sitting on the fence on that one. It was like it wasn't great and it wasn't bad. Like it was good. <laughs> Love Jack White, one of my idols. Um, just brings me back to simpler times. Again, uh, I got my license, got that taste of freedom, and um, I was just blasting that album. Absolutely. Because you could totally blast that. It's like, a different kind of freedom. Yeah, definitely. Like, it's... Rite of passage. It's Yeah, it's something you've never experienced before, and you don't know what it's like yeah. until you're finally in the car by yourself, what's, driving down the road, listening to the music you want to listen to. Yeah, what's sad is um, never I'm, so used to, <laughs> yeah, I'm so used to driving now, it's just like... Yeah, yeah. It's I'm going to start walking places so I can appreciate <laughs> yeah, driving again. appreciate it again. <laughs> um, my number two, <laughs> this is just the doomer and me talking... Um, I'm a huge Radiohead fan. I know you are. I should have said that instead of pub. I never really talk about it that, that much. People that either love Radiohead or they don't listen to Radiohead. Yeah, some people make that argument that they're like, oh, they're so mopey. And they're like, I like Radiohead. Yeah, like um, you can make the same argument for like Coldplay or. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, OK Computer. That's like everyone's favorite album by them, I feel like. Like it's like unanimous. Mm. Um, one of those albums, really good, never misses. Um, one of the songs on there, um, Tom York got inspiration for it because he watched, um, Leonardo DiCaprio's version of Romeo and Juliet Ooh, with um, the guns. Yeah, <laughs> with the guns. Um, he got that. inspired by that movie, <laughs> and I can't remember if 
the music inspired him or the story or how they like presented it. But it was the inspiration for this song called Exit Music for a Film. And um, that's one of those songs that inspires me to write like music, like whether it be compositional or just something personal. Um, I felt really moved listening to that because Tom York just has that rawness in his voice. Like it shouldn't sound good, <laughs> his voice. But, like, it makes me think of the lead singer of Smashing Pumpkins, for example. Yep. Oh, man. Like, again, his voice shouldn't make sense, but it just works. It works. It works. It's phenomenal. Love Smashing Pumpkins. It's all in the delivery. Yes. Yeah. Um, the nasaliness. I don't know. It just Vanessa strikes. Vanessa Hudgens. <laughs> it just strikes a chord with me, man. Oh, uh, so. I, I love the way music can make you feel. Absolutely. It's insane what <laughs> audio can do to the human body yeah it, it's and to break that down into theories like music theory i, I see I, something i would go like if i had a million dollars and could go to school and not worry about paying bills or anything yeah. that's i would go to school for like music theory and like absolutely stuff like music that. theory will kick your ass oh because i i was blind so i couldn't even read sheet music when i went to college i can't either um well luckily i can now you took music theory yeah, <laughs> my oral skills are horrible though. That's, that's um, what your girlfriend said. That's um, you think you're funny, motherfucker. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, oral skills are like training your ear. Yeah, like to listen to musical notes and like dissonance and, that's, and intervals and all. That's that. something I started picking up on. Like when I said I started appreciating music for like actual instruments and stuff mm -hmm. um, with the uh, Harry Styles album. It just felt very pure and passionate. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I started listening for things like that, for a good drum beat, and then things that start and build. Mm -hmm. Like, I love a good slow build, and Pink, you know, Pink Floyd's great at doing that. Absolutely. And, like, I, my little brother's 15. I try to get him. Well, he's 16 now, sorry. Um, <laughs> but I try to get him into Pink Floyd, because I, I had wished that I had gotten into them younger. Yeah. Um, so I was trying to get him into it. And he was like, these, these songs are just so slow, man. I'm like, you don't understand. Yeah. You have to wait. The, the, the fact that it builds slowly. Yeah. And you have to wait for it. It mm -hmm. makes it that much better. I also feel like this generation of uh, Instant younger gratification. Pick, exactly. TikTok, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like ringtone uh, sized like songs. They just want the good stuff. Yeah. They, want, they want a two minute with the good sized pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bo Burnham. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. That's a, yeah, there you go. Hit yeah. right there. Bo Burnham, uh, does he, have you ever seen Zach Stone, um, wants to be famous or be, or uh, I haven't seen it, but I've seen that it's on Netflix. I didn't say the title of the show. Right. But, um, Zach Stone, he, but yeah, Zach Stone's gonna be famous. Yeah. That's it. Um, he has this great bit where, um, he's trying to write a hit song and he only makes, he only writes what people want to hear. And it's like a five second long song. And then he's like, oh, I can just write ringtones. That way people can just listen to a lot of my songs in a short time frame. And I'm right. like, you just described TikTok. Yep, like, that's or exactly just, what yeah. it is. Yeah. And They're I remember so like funny. my teachers when I was seven and eight saying, you kids these days, attention spans shorter than it used to be. And you know, it's been 20 years since then. Yeah. It's, I'm sure it's even worse now. Oh, absolutely. Like, some of my kids that I train at work, I have to, like, literally keep their focus. Like, snap in their face. Like, hey, look at me. Mm -hmm. Focus on what we're doing. Don't give a shit about what they're doing over there because they're focused. You focus. You're a good coach. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. No thank problem. You. But, like, um, it's, it's insane. And a lot of times, like with me, Mm -hmm. A lot of shit didn't click until I was too old to do anything about anything. Like when I realized that the more you practice at something, the better results you're going to get out of it mm -hmm. yeah. and shit like that. I was already out of high school. And with athletics, once you're out of high school and you don't go to college, it's not really much to do other than coach, yeah. which is where I went. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am the type of guy to listen more for the instrumental side of songs than yes. the lyrical ones. Because my buddy Tank, he's like, listen to this part of the song, like, and like, listen to the words. Because he knows I never yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. And um, 
when I do end up appreciating the lyrics in a song, I'm like, oh, wow, that's actually really clever. That's really, really yeah. great writing. With hip hop, I'm more lyrical based because I, I'm no longer impressed by hip hop beats mm-hmm. to where I'm like, oh, dude, I got to listen to this drop again. You could, like, yeah, you could literally make one on your phone like right yeah, now. Yeah, like it's not that like I have could make the same thing that Lil Wayne makes. Or right. Anything. But like a, a good beat's a good beat. And yeah. I, then I want something on top of that of substance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When a, it's just a song. Perfect example, the Beatles. Mm-hmm. Something in the way she moves. That's the most basic verse you could write. Yeah. And it just, it. But it's pushes done all so the well. Yeah, it pushes it's all the so, right buttons. Simplicity me. does not mean that it, you can't, that like, it's not great. Yeah. Just because it's simple. That's why I love Jack White's style of writing. It's so Jack simple. Johnson's like that Jack too. Johnson. Again, yeah. a great beach, musician. A little beach rock. A little beach rock. <laughs> um, very simplistic mm-hmm. song structure of we got the melody, we got the rhythm, and then we got the story. Absolutely. A rule of three, pretty much. Um, I feel like I had, a, I had more to say on that. But you might have. I got derailed a little bit. I apologize. No, it's okay. That wasn't your fault. Um, so no. I got a few honorable mentions. Mean. Yes. Um, we we mentioned one already. The the evening was Silk, Silk Sonic. Yes. The new Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack joint. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal from Absolutely. front to back. Smoking out the window is my favorite. <laughs> oh yeah, it's I so love the good. music video. It's oh so yeah, great. smoking out the window. You know what I've appreciated more? The more I listen to it, skate. I Skate's like, so good. Like and nobody skate. really like. Not that nobody likes it, but like. People that aren't huge Bruno fans Mm -hmm. are always like, I don't really like Skate, but it's one of my favorites. It was the second single off the album. I really liked it. Are you a Strokes fan, The Strokes? I would be familiar with The Strokes. I I wouldn't say I'm like a big fan. I feel like one of my honorable mentions would be um, The New Abnormal or... um, 1251 is a pretty good album too by them. Absolutely. That's got Reptilia. um, 1251, really good. <laughs> <laughs> this is a song of the album. That's great. Well, uh, you got more on them? Yeah, I got a few more. Um, Coloring Book by Chance the Rapper. Okay. It's very, like, hip-hop gospel, and mm. I'm not religious at all, but mm. there's, like, literally entire songs of, like, that's it's it's a gospel song. It's all it yeah. is. But it's so good. Um, Like, the, the song Finish Line is so beautiful and they actually have like a choir in it and stuff Mm -hmm. and then he's got songs like no problem yeah with Lil Wayne talking about like you know one more label tries to stop me there's gonna be some dreadhead dudes in the lobby (laughs) I will say I'm not the biggest Chance the Rapper fan but I do I do catch myself uh, listening to Same Drugs Same Drugs is great it's off this album yeah. Um, I really like Cocoa Butter Kisses, but that's off acid. That's rain. A, I feel like that's everyone's favorite. Yeah. Or every time we talk about chance, that's what people say. That's a great one. Um Cigarettes on cigarettes, my mama think I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh then also I've got Damn by Kendrick Lamar. That's, that's my girlfriend one of my yeah, my girlfriend uh, that's likes phenomenal. that. Phenomenal. Yeah. Um the, the, when that came out I was working for Drew, so I would be off for long stints of time mm-hmm. in between runs. And my buddy Kyle, that we were talking about earlier, was house sitting. So we would go to this house, and ha- they had like four dogs, which is why he was house sitting. Mm. Um, we sat out on the back porch and blared this in the middle of the country, like no one around, smoking joint after joint, listening to this. And we did it like four nights in a row Hell yeah. and listened to the album every night. And we just really bonded over that. I actually have his initial tattooed on me. Well, I haven't. Was that an anagram? Is that what that is? An anagram, yeah. Yeah, Dylan and Kyle smoking weed forever. He's got the same thing on his arm. That's friendship. It's that's an cool Elvish. Fuck. That's fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. Uh, do you have any more honorable mentions? Um, because I no, have two more. I don't think I do. I think I said all of them. Um, so my next one is actually a soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Guardians of the Galaxy. I fe- I was gonna guess that. Phenomenal. Oh, man, it's so good. I figured it wouldn't make your list, but I figured it'd be some kind of mention. Yeah, that's at least. exactly. I didn't want to do it because it's not an original work of art. It's basically a playlist. <laughs> um, and then the Dirty Dancing soundtrack. Oh, so okay. good. Um, actually, we, Justice and I were watching because we have like the 
30th or 25th anniversary edition of it on Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. And they had some behind the scenes. Like 78% of this movie's budget mm-hmm. was the soundtrack. Wow. Because there was like, it was like using Justin Bieber and like uh, Olivia Rodrigo now. Like it was the mm-hmm. best of the best pop songs yeah. of the time. And it's very much a time piece. It's, it's kind of like a, a John Hume movie, like the coming of age I gotcha. type of, like it gives that yeah. kind of vibe. Not quite a coming of age story, but mm-hmm. like just that era of movies. Yeah. Really fun. It's actually, I asked Justice what her favorite album was. She said the Dirty Dancing soundtrack. Really? Yeah. That's funny. Oh, she, I bought it for her on uh, vinyl. Actually. Gotcha. Um, I was almost a victim of buying that on vinyl myself for a, a victim, a significant other. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Um, if we're going on the tangent of, um, soundtracks, um, John Williams, like, Oh yeah. Make- Phenomenal. Uh, Tarzan, Phil Collins. Oh, you got to get out oh, my of God. Here. Absolutely. He didn't have to do that for us, but he, he still did. did. Um, I'm a huge Scott Pilgrim fan. Um, Everything from like the licensed music to like the original songs I wrote for Sex Bob, just earworms, like so just good. great stuff. And it's that tone of that nasty sounding fuzz and just <laughs> ramshackle fucking sounding drum kits. And it's just it's a beautiful thing. I love the music in oh, that yeah. movie so much. Um, Brie Larson yeah, killing it. Love Brie Larson. Um. Another favorite soundtrack of mine, which I we talked about this the other day, actually, um, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Mm-hmm. Very, very <laughs> enjoyable to listen to. Like, I love it. I, uh, I can't remember who it's. Um, you looked at um We looked at it. Pharrell Williams? No. No. Uh, he was on it, yeah. but it wasn't like his, com- was it conducting? Com- composer. Uh, composer. Okay, uh, he wasn't uh, the composer. Okay. He just uh, said with special guests, mm-hmm. Pharrell Williams. But uh, it was very, like, electronic, bass-heavy, mm-hmm. uh, felt weird. Like, yeah. it, it stood the hair on the up on the back of your neck. Which is very fitting for the villain of yes. that movie. Uh, uh, which is what they are going for. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's great. Absolutely. Um, uh, Hans many, Zimmerman, love him. Good many uh, problems as that movie has. <laughs> the the <laughs> score is great. Yeah. Um, Tyler Bates, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. Like, uh, yes. yeah. Uh, I actually have the second one, uh, too, the soundtrack for the second Guardians of the Galaxy. He did. He wrote music for another movie, and I was like, oh shit, he did this too? Like, that's that's also another amazing thing when, like, um, you're a fan of, mu- like, a piece of music, and then you kind of explore around, and then you're like, oh my God, the same person makes this song for this thing? Like, that's so, uh, mm-hmm. so talented. Like, that's great. Really good stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess it's time for our drum roll. My number one. I don't know if you saved your favorite on the list. I did save my favorite. What a it guy. was really it was really hard to save. You it had to do it here live on the, a hot mic. <laughs> yeah, on a hot, hot mic. Um, this one is the longest one that I wrote about. But um, do would you want to go first? No, or you go right ahead. Okay. So this last one is. Um, Let me think about how I want to say this. It was kind of a toss-up between the two albums. Um, I love video game music. I I love movie like um, soundtracks too. Don't get me wrong, but um, when it comes to auditorial um, stuff, um, I think when it comes to video games, that's when music really shines through. Because it's one thing when you're watching a movie, like you can't control the story. Mm -hmm. It's another thing when like you happen upon like a treasure chest and then you get like that swelling of like strings or what have you. And, um, you look like you accomplished something like you felt like you did something. Um, I chose persona five soundtrack. You probably don't have no idea. Yeah. Uh, probably a lot of people will know what it is, but, um, it's one of these albums that makes me really nostalgic. Um, I collect records and, um, one of my big, I guess, purchases in my collection was the Persona 5 soundtrack. It was like this four vinyl box set. And um, actually, it goes for a lot of money because I just looked it up on eBay because I was just curious. And uh, the price went up like mm. a lot. Um, I think I could bring myself to it's like stocks. sell it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> 
Um, but I was addicted to this game. That's great. And um, why it's so nostalgic for me is because I played it in high school. Mm-hmm. And um, whenever my friends would come over, like we would have something planned. But then for some reason, they would get sucked into the story. And it was just this great couch co-op thing that we had going on. Even though it wasn't a multiplayer game, like that's how uh, it was that togetherness. I can't even think of what it's called now, but it was a horror game mm-hmm. about an abandoned like hospital. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's that was always great to like. Even if I wasn't playing, I'd sit and watch because yeah. the, it's just so fun. Such a, it, it's another one with uh, shit. I'm gonna have to come back and let let everybody know what it was. <laughs> um. Uh, I love video games for that reason. Um, like that together. Insomniac you always uses really good yeah. uh, music. Call of Duty usually has pretty good music too. Mm-hmm. Which is odd because like they don't have to do that. That's like 2K and Call of Duty and FIFA are like staple games that are going to sell mm. no matter what they release. And half the time they're the same game with a new skin. Man. Um I had to write down my feelings and thoughts about this game because there were two, um, I don't want to say long winded, but like I had a lot to say about this mm-hmm. because, um, it kind of inspired me to write. I, a lot of these albums, um, contribute to my inspiration, but like this one definitely plays a heavy hand in that for sure. Um, it also just reminds me of like, just the good times I have playing video games with some of my friends, whether it be like Jackbox or um, a, not even a multiplayer game. Like it's a story driven kind of game. Like I remember this one time uh, I had a bunch of friends from college come over to my house and um, we were playing Detroit Become Human. And that's not even like a multiplayer game. It's actually a really long winded game full of choices and a lot of story character development. But like it was so, I would say weird to see these people I couldn't even imagine playing like a video game holding a controller in their hands and they were like getting sucked into the story and like getting involved with how like I was playing it and like what choices I should have made and um they were shocked when something like big story-wise happened Mm -hmm. and um I I love it but um back to persona (laughs) (laughs) um every track on there is just a masterpiece from the intro of wake up to this melancholy ambience of behind the mask. Um, these songs are just so moving and bombastic at times while at the same time being very charming. And, um, it just adds to the overall experience of the game too. Um, I could go on for hours about it, but, um, that's all I wrote down about it. But, Really nice. Really nice. That was very passionate, buddy. Thank you. (laughs) That was great. Um, My number one album, favorite of all time, is not surprising if you know me (laughs) at all. Um, The cover is on multiple different walls in my house. I have a tattoo to my leg, multiple different shirts with it. Justice actually had a shirt on when I left today (laughs) with this album cover on it. Um, but it is Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. Uh, I I consider that to be the perfect album. Wow. The, like, every single track flows into the next. There's no dead space in between them to where there's a beginning and an end. If you listen to it all the way through, it's one project mm-hmm. that they cut up into sections. Almost to the point where if you listen to like a song out of the middle of it, it just sounds like it starts in the middle of the song Mm -hmm. because it starts in the middle of the album. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just something that like, it took so much time and effort to do something like that, that it's just, it needs to be appreciated for as long as it can be. Oh yeah. And the fact that like so many things have been made to it, like there's a whole theory about Paul Bart Malkoff too being made to the 
Dark Side of the Moon soundtrack. <laughs> And it lines up. There's a whole movie of like a thing on, so not movie, but a video on YouTube gotcha. about it, telling you about the different parts that line up, and it's perfect. <laughs> and wow. like, uh, um, I believe it goes along with uh, Alice in Wonderland too. But I believe Alice in Wonderland was even made before Dark Side of the Moon, and it just I don't know if that was intentional or not, but mm. it's it's very you come along for a ride from through the whole thing, and there's many parts of it that are so unique, like in the beginning of money and time where they're using alarm clocks and cash registers Yeah, to start a song. It's just nuts. Like who <laughs> thinks of that? Yeah. yeah. And then to just, they're also simple, like brain damage and us and them, which is one of my favorite I love songs. Us and, them. us and them's great. Uh, actually the flaming lips, the band I mentioned earlier, they did a cover of dark side of the moon. Did they? And really? they did. What was it? I think it was either time or, or money i think it was time they <laughs> did a cover of time with coughs and sneezes oh my god like that is the that's rhythm fun. that's great <laughs> but yeah it's uh there's no skippable songs and honestly like when i listen to it with headphones sometimes like i think it's brain damage where it's like doo, 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 mm. and it sounds like it's way far off in yeah. your headphones, so I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, it's just phenomenal, and it, it's, I don't know. Is it's it one of those so albums good. you listen to something new, like every time you hear it? Like I listen every listen through. I try to listen for different parts every time. Yeah, I for sure, you. and enjoy everything. Um, it took me a while to get into Dark Side of the Moon because I was strictly a The Wall fan. Yeah. Uh, like when I first was introduced, because that's all the music I heard. Uh, like, comfortably numb and uh, brick in the wall part two, and mm -hmm. you know, mother. Like all those songs were like, oh my god, this is the pinnacle of music at the time. <laughs> and I just wasn't. I wasn't aware that Dark Side of the Moon was an entire work. So I just hit shuffle. Right. And it just started, and it started out like headphones in. Alarm clocks in my ear piercing. Oh, what the fuck is this? You know, I was very off put at first and it took a minute for me to get into it. And now that I have, it's, it's perfect. Well said. Thank you. But yeah, that is our top 10 favorite albums, man. This went longer than I thought it would. Yes, it, yes, it did. An hour and a half of wow. footage. That's great. I'm going to cut it down, obviously, but uh, as of now, there's a hunt. I've had said 100 hours. There's 100 hours of behind-the-scenes footage. <laughs> Join the Patreon if we ever make one. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. Any uh, closing thoughts or remarks, um, my guy? I didn't I know like we... most of yours, like, uh, off the top of my head. I was I, familiar with a lot of them. But I was I familiar with all the artists on your list. Um, That's what, as, as yeah. argue, or um, Other than, like, J. Cole or um, Lil Nas. Um, that was just an honorable mention. He yeah, I know. I'm just saying that was like the only thing. Yeah, yeah. But I still know Mon of them and I heard yeah. of some of their songs. The Montero came out when mm -hmm. I started dating Justice. So that's another like time piece takes me out of that gotcha. time. That's beautiful. Right. It was when we were working at rail. Yeah. yeah. Like right before everybody quit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, with that being said, um, thanks for listening. Absolutely. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, We'll be back at some point with a different topic. Yeah. And we're going to try and be more focused going forward. Absolutely. Fumble around trying to figure out what this podcast is. We're still trying. Still figuring it out. <laughs> we'll be figuring it out results. for years. <laughs> Drop a like. Subscribe if so, you feel so inclined. So what are we? <laughs> what are we? <laughs> you had a David Putty face when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the one going to hell. <laughs> Of course I believe in God. <laughs> of course I believe in God. As you can see, I didn't paint my face. I paint her. <laughs> Wait, is that Joe? That's Joe, Oh baby. my God, that's you Joe. You just now No, I that. did not know. Really? That's so good. Uh, his voice is just... Iconic. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm stupid. I feel Kronk, like... I've learned something today. <laughs> learned Thank something. you, Tyler. No problem. I'm uh, glad I could lend a hand. Uh, and tune in next time to learn something from Tyler. Thank you. And good night. And good luck. Biscuit. <laughs>